Good morning. Today is Sunday the 6th of March and it's the first Sunday of Lent. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, The priest shall take the pannier from your hand and lay it before the altar of the Lord your God. Then in the sight of the Lord your God you must make this pronouncement. My father was a wandering Aramean. He went down into Egypt to find refuge there. Few in numbers, but there he became a nation, great, mighty and strong. The Egyptians ill-treated us, they gave us no peace and inflicted harsh slavery on us. But we called on the Lord, the God of our fathers. The Lord heard our voice and saw our misery, our toil and oppression. And the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. He brought us here and gave us this land, a land where milk and honey flows. Here then I bring the first fruits of the produce of the soil that you, the Lord, have given me. You must then lay them before the Lord your God, and bow down in the sight of the Lord your God. The Word of the Lord. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 10. Scripture says, The Word, that is the faith we proclaim, is very near to you. It is on your lips and in your heart. If your lips confess that Jesus is the Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. By believing from the heart, you are made righteous. By confessing with your lips, you are saved. When Scripture says, those believe who believe in him will have no cause for shame, it makes no distinction between Jew and Greek. All belong to the same Lord, who is rich enough, however many ask for his help, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The Word of the Lord The Gospel is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit through the wilderness, being tempted there by the devil for forty days. During that time he ate nothing and at the end he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, if you are the Son of Man, tell this stone to turn into a loaf. But Jesus replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone. Then leading him to a height, the devil showed him in a moment of time all the kingdoms of the world, and said to him, I will give you all the power and the glory of these kingdoms. For it has been committed to me, and I give it to anyone I choose. Worship me then, and it shall be yours. But Jesus answered him, Scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God and serve him alone. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said to him, throw yourself down from here, for Scripture says, He will put his angels in charge of you to guard you. And again, they will hold you up on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. But Jesus answered him, it has been said, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Having exhausted all these ways of tempting him, the devil left him to return at the appointed time. The Gospel of the Lord It's tradition that the Gospels in years A, B and C of the Church's Sundays always begin with the story of the temptation, whether from the Matthew, Mark or Luke. And because we're in year C, the year of the Luke, Gospel of Luke, this is one is taken from Luke. So Jesus is tempted for bread, for power, for esteem. He turns them all down and using scripture, the word of God, says, no, I reject your te your the temptations that you're putting before me. The devil leaves him, return to the appointed time, not quite sure what that means. I think it's perhaps the agony in the garden. So we're called to resist the temptations, to believe in other gods, in other priorities, 
in other fulfillments and say, no, the only ultimate fulfillment we want is our worshipping and our relationship, our covenant with God our Father. This is precisely what's given in the Old Testament. There's the, shall we say, the creed is given to the people to say. The creed that says, I was a wandering Aramean, came down into Egypt, enslaved, and by God's mighty hand I was freed and given the land flowing with milk and honey by God's power. And in return, I worship the Lord my God. The New Testament creed is universal, and it's in the reading from Romans, that anybody who says, their heart turns to Jesus and with their lips says, I believe in him, can have faith, does have faith, and is thus saved. And of course the big problem for Paul in that letter to the Romans was, what about the salvation of the Jews and the Gentiles? Why weren't the Jews turning to God for salvation? And was there a place for salvation for the Gentiles? Paul never fully understands why the Jews, those that were the majority who weren't turned to Jesus and accept a new covenant, but he's absolutely convinced that God has called all people, Jews and Gentiles, to the new covenant. So we, we reflect on that phrase, um, looking at do we, can we answer yes to both Paul's questions? The first is, the first is, if your lips confess Jesus is the Lord, and if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. So do we believe in our hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead? And do we say publicly, our lips say, Jesus is Lord? If we do both of those, then we're on the road to salvation. We're part of God's family. It's what was said on our behalf at our baptism. And we renew it. We're one, one, way, way can, one way of looking at Lent is to see us as 40 days leading up to the Easter Vigil, the precise moment where we very publicly and together renew our baptism vows, where we promise to reject Satan and believe in God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. So on this first Sunday of Lent, we ask for God's grace that we may have a good Lent, that we may spend time each day pondering how we put Jesus and the calls of being a, a follower of Jesus first in our lives, that we increase our trust in God and that we turn away from anything that is keeping us, that is a distance between us and God. And of course for all of us there will be something, all of us are sinners and we try and see this time as a time of reform, helping us, helping God, asking God to help us overcome any tendencies to sin that we have and trying to have our heart fully focused on God, the Lord God. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Lord, create a new spirit within us. Let us bless our Redeemer, who has brought us to this day of salvation. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Christ our life, we were buried with you in baptism to rise from the dead. Lead this day along the new path of life. Lead us this day along the new path of life. Lord, create a new spirit within us. You went everywhere, Lord, doing good for everyone. Help us to care for the common good of all. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Help us to work with other people to build the earthly city, but never let us lose sight of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Healer of souls and bodies, mend our broken lives. Let us receive all the blessings of your holiness. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Lord, we ask for peace in the Ukraine. May the killing of people, the bombing of all those buildings be stopped. Lord, create a new spirit within us. Our Father, we art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Through our annual Lenten observance, Lord, deepen our understanding of the mystery of Christ, and make it a reality in the conduct of our lives. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and keep us from all evil and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. Have a good week. Today is Sunday, the beginning of our Christian week.